We're going to be starting in just a few minutes shortly. Waiting on a few more people to make their way in. God bless you, Pastor Simon. Bless you, Pastor Center. God bless you. I'm assuming that at his pastor the white office at this date. That's my kind of church right there. Everybody all right this evening? Doing well, sir. Good. Let's see who who we have in here. I know I've seen Fenner already. Uh, iPhone 90, tell me who you are. My apologies. This is Pastor Wyckoff here. Pastor Wyckoff, all right. Glad you made it in tonight, sir. I'm waiting for one other person before we get rolling in pretty good. And that is uh, my good friend, Bishop Eric Tate, who is uh, from Texas. And so I've been texting him to let him know uh, that we're getting started for tonight. So I'm just trying to give a few minutes for him and then uh, we'll get right on in here. Won't we'll try to belabor the point and hold you guys up too long tonight. Pastor Simon is glad that you made it in. I know that you were on a uh, an important call in regards to the job, so I know that that is uh, is critical. I know that Pastor Winder is also going to make his way in uh, as we get started tonight. So I'm just trying to give brothers a chance to just kind of uh, make their way right on in. Let's just kind of start a little bit. And I'll tell you, I'll start with uh, Eugene Finner. He has been a, a member of my church uh, for many, many years and uh, one of the sons of the ministry. We're looking at establishing something in a few years, uh, two years out perhaps in the Maryland area. And uh, he's got a, a ministry toward men and uh, really toward, you know, people that most people in many traditional church contexts would turn away, which is quite interesting. Him being uh, someone that comes out of the Church of God in Christ, you would think that he would be real traditional, uh, but that is not the case. And so I'll let him introduce himself from that point. Fenner, go ahead. You have the floor, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. I stated uh, Eugene Fenner. Uh, <clears throat> been with uh, married to uh, Monique Fenner. Been married. 18 years just past uh, August 1st, actually. Uh, we have three children together. Uh, we reside in the Newport News area. Uh, glad to be here. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Pastor Simons, go right ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Pastor Jesse Simon, um, I reside in the Newport News area. Um, I call myself travocational. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I pastor. I I'm in school. I work. I work full time. Um, so um, just just happy to to meet everybody. I'm also married uh, to Lady Ebony Simon. We've been married for about 15 years. Got five kids. Y'all pray pray for me long and strong uh, when you get a I chance. <laughs> but um, I'm happy to just to be here, just to kind of you know hear hear what what's going on, um, the exciting news of what's going on, and try to be a blessing. All right, Amen. Pastor Wyckoff, go ahead, sir. You have the floor. Good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Pastor Chris Wyckoff, uh, Pastor Jackson Chapel First Missionary Baptist Church, Wilson, North Carolina. Longtime friend and fraternal brother to uh, Bishop Johnson. Uh, right now, uh, my camera's off because I'm trying to balance, you know, three three stones with one bird. Uh, that's just how real it is. Um, we're working on some initiatives right now. Uh, in order to raise funds to, to uh, provide brand new clothes for 
uh, students that are returning to school in, in the Wilson community, many struggling families uh, there. Uh, so I'm trying to do some posts and some other things while while on this while on this call. So uh, I'm I'm definitely interested. Uh, I'm also uh, quadruple vocational. If, if <laughs> I'm, uh, 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 teaching doctoral doctoral studies program at United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio, uh, we are in our second day of uh, high school. Uh, courses as well. I teach American history and social sciences uh, for Johnson County Public Schools. So we are back on campus for the second day. Uh, so uh, it's on and popping. Uh, like, yes, so many, like so many of us. God bless you. Bless you, sir. I'm not going to belabor the point anymore. Others will make their way in as we get started tonight. I'm going to share my screen with you all and uh, hopes that you'll be able to see a little bit of the presentation tonight. Most of you are familiar with me, but may not be familiar with me in this context. And so uh, just give me a thumbs up, say something to me if you can see that okay. And can you hear me okay? Yeah, doesn't look like, doesn't look like you guys could hear me. So I'm gonna try that again. I can hear you. You could hear me okay? Can yes, everybody sir. hear me okay? Wonderful, all right, let's go back and do it one more time. And uh, we'll pull yeah, that I can right hear you. I can hear you just fine. All right, wonderful. We'll keep right on going since everybody can hear me. Hopefully everybody can see that okay. And uh, I'm going to roll right on through this on tonight. We'll get started and make our way right on through. I don't know why it did that, but let's get that out of the way. And let's, uh, let me admit Ron Clark on in. I'll stop the screen share and try it one more time. Let's shoot Brother Ron Clark. We're getting ready to get started. And uh, we'll roll right on through this one tonight. Hopefully this one will be a little bit better. Wonderful. So uh, what's happening is the Lord's laid upon my heart now to really begin to launch a fellowship. This is, let me be very clear, this is not a reformation, uh, but it is a fellowship of like-minded persons um, and a place of mentoring and momentum for ministry and marketplace leaders. And so whether you're interested or looking for a place of covering, consulting, compassion, connection, or camaraderie, um, I want you to consider Dominion Covenant Fellowship. And like I said, it really is a place for both persons who are engaged in ministry and marketplace leaders at the same time. You know, all too often we can find ourselves engaged in ministry and so many people may find themselves with a dual call. And so many of you have already mentioned that you're bivocational, uh, triple by, by, by uh, triplicational, if you say quadruplicational, if you will. And, and I'm going to touch on that a little bit more as we go through. I think that ministry in its context has changed in regards to what exactly ministry is, what it is not. And then also our penetration into culture with the gospel of the kingdom also looks different in today's time as well. And so I think you know, what we're, what we're finding is that what we consider to be ministry is vastly different from what our predecessors uh, have been engaged in. And I think a lot of that has to do with what the Lord wants to see done in the day and age and time in which we are in. Hopefully everybody can see uh, my slides. Can you all see my slides okay? Good, 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 good. Let me get over there to where they are myself. Let's keep right on rolling through. So I want you to just consider, you know, why Dominion Covenant Fellowship and why now? And what I believe is that there is a need for fellowship gathering of like-minded pastoral and, as I said, ministry and marketplace leaders who view the larger world of advancing uh, the kingdom and culture. Many people, I think gone are the days of the four-wall concept of, of just churching. Now, I don't want you to miss my meaning as a churchman and as a, prof a professional credentialed churchman. I, I believe that we have kind of missed the intent focus of Jesus in regards to ensuring that we are reaching people and discipling people at the same time. Jesus was very engaged in culture and sometimes 
we can get so involved in church isms that we spend all of our time behind the four walls and really missing the intent of what God intends. It's not either or, but it is both and. Over the last decade to 30 years, ministry and marketplace leaders have found themselves at opposite ends of the spectrum. And what I'm thankful for in terms of how the Lord has wired me is that I've never seen the difference between those who have a five-fold ministry call in the marketplace and those who have a five-fold ministry call in terms of ministry as we would know it today in our time. And all too often, we kind of created these big eyes and little U's. Dominion Covenant Fellowship is not going to be a fellowship that is oriented that way. And so there, there's not going to be, you know, because you may have been 25 years in, or like Bishop Eric Tate, as he makes his way in a little bit later on tonight, or in your second to third pastorate, like Pastor, with, uh, Pastor uh, Chris Wyckoff, or somebody who's getting started, started very, very soon, like uh, Eugene Fenner or Jesse Simons, who's right in year five, six, seven, and eight. Wherever you are, there's going to have to be a, a ministry component part in terms of how God has oriented you to be able to meet the needs of people. And that is critically important. And all too often, I think too many of us, we misunderstand God's meaning when he looks at how he wants to organize and move throughout the times in which we are in. Having said that, the reality is neither scripture, Jesus, or Paul communicates this as a spiritual principle or a biblical truth or principle. In other words, to separate out those who are engaged in ministry and those who are engaged in the marketplace. So having said that, why Dominion Covenant Fellowship and why now? I believe that Jesus and his disciples, I believe, believe scripture bears, bears a clear record in all of this, that all were in, in a profession before called to the ministry of the church. All of the disciples, whether it was Luke as a, as a doctor, the fisherman, um, the lawyer, all of them, the tax collector with Matthew, all of them were involved in some kind of profession. And it's because they were professional men and they were accomplished in their skill, if you will, or if they were men who were credentialed and learned in what it is that they were doing, it is because they were fruitful as a result of being faithful. I'll say that again. Fruitful as a result of being faithful. This is why the Lord called them into the ministry. And I think high time, it is high time now uh, that people feel like they're called and they got an itch to preach. And uh, as you guys know that I know, there's got to be a level of accomplishment outside because you can't use the engagement of ministry or the engagement of marketplace ministry, if you will, as kingdompreneurs to be someone that's looking at how you want to build your self-esteem. As you know, there's going to be some hard knocks along the way, and it's going to take the professional acumen of discipline that you learn in the marketplace to be successful in the ministry or what you learn in the ministry to be successful in the marketplace. And when you even consider Paul, Paul was a tent maker. Um, and as he was a tent maker, uh, he did very, very well for himself way before he way before he was literally receiving help from the Philippian church. And so with that being the case, it's critically important to understand when to welcome men, Ron Clark and Pastor Marce Winder, critically important to understand uh, that you've got to have really a nest egg, if you will, already ready. Now, like many of us, we started from the ground up, if you will, and begin to make our way, but that's not the Bible way nor is it the pattern of Christ's way in terms of when you consider the relationship between Paul and Timothy. He mentored him, but he also sent him, but he also, as he sent him, made sure that he was well taken care of at the same time. Let me just continue to share my screen with you tonight because I want to hasten through this, and then we'll do a little bit of Q&A um, as we go on into this even a little bit further uh, into tonight's teaching. Uh, that being the case, I want you to consider this with me. We're in a season where churches and ministries that survived and thrived through the pandemic had a few, excuse that uh, typo, few things in common. Number one, 
if you made it through the pandemic season, you were either well established with multimedia teams or you had a point of transaction scale for in gathering of tithes and offerings. You had multiple ways electronically where you were able to receive tithe and offering. And those of us who had to preach through that dynamic, I know Pastor Winder, Pastor Simmons, and also Pastor Wyckoff, we found it very interesting, an interesting dynamic between preaching to that camera versus preaching to an audience of people. And what we found out is that we really found out what we're all made of in regards to um, being involved in ministry. And it's very different. And what I would like to suggest is that what we found out in many of our churches is that we had very few members, very few attendees, and even less in terms of disciples. I want to welcome in Bishop Eric Tate. Glad he's been able to make it in on tonight. Even less disciples. And so there's a switch and a transition, if you will, in terms of how the Lord wants to orient ministry in our day and time. And I believe that every ministry that is going to continue to preach the kingdom, extend out in the culture, push back darkness, is going to have to have a level of sustainability outside tithe and offering. And it's, we're coming right back to the way that Jesus called the disciples. He called them out of the marketplace and then called them in to now going after souls. And in order to ensure that the ministry is sustainable, whether that is, you know, like Pastor Winder has got a very, very uh, uh, profitable and beneficial, you know, real estate component. I know Pastor Simons is looking at the educational and daycare right and others. Me, myself, also in the area of affordable housing, you've got to have a component part that, is going to seed into funding many of the programming that our communities are going to need. Or you may be someone who was actually engaged and involved in speaking, and you may not have considered yourself someone who's involved in ministry, but whatever the platform you're on, whether it's coaching or consulting, if you're involved in that, whenever you're out, you're becoming representative of who Jesus is. And I think in many instances, people will find you even that much more attractive to hearing what it is that you have to say to become a part of being discipled and connecting into your local church as a result of that. I'm going to share my stream with you all again tonight, and uh, we're going to kind of see if we can't could really, really make our way through a little bit more. Consider this. Now, beyond the scale of receiving tithe and offering, beyond that, and beyond the um, capacity of staffing that would help you penetrate the space of, of social media or cyber sanctuary and cyber church, I think these three C's are more commonplace to many in ministry and marketplace today, more than technology capacity or the ability to scale in terms of business. If you made it through the pandemic, what was built into you during that time was courage and contact with consistency. Courage with contact with consistency. I want you to consider what, what I mean when I say courage. When I say courage, what I mean here is uh, during the pandemic, whether planting, transitioning, or continuing, you've had to know that you know that you know that you know you are called to ministry or marketplace or both at the same time. Because one of the things got that got tested was those who were in it for the show or those who even wanted to enter the marketplace for money, then when the market began to shift and technology came to the forefront that much more, your motivations got found out for why you're in this. And I think that all of you can testify along with me. Uh, there was a moment of clarity about why you're doing what you're doing. And I really think uh, let me let, 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 let me be leaving even more emphatic with us on tonight. I really believe that what the Lord did was he purified motivations, he solidified calls, and at the same time, he weeded out those who he had not called who were in it for a show or a paycheck. And I think that's on both sides, both ministry and marketplace. If you were not sincerely called to either or or both and at the same time, you got weeded out and really 
some people who should be helping someone else or serving in another business entity somewhere had to find themselves going back to do that. Amen to that, somebody. Amen. Let me go back and share my screen with you guys again, and we'll keep right on pressing our way through on tonight. So having, having said all of that, having said all of that, um, I want to move right on into this. When I said contact and consistency, here's what I mean. Surviving and thriving through the pandemic was about contact connection. Okay. And it was about the volume and the capacity of touching and connecting with people. This is one of the first times people truly needed the church globally. So every time, whether you were streaming on your website or on social or some social media platform, people needed to know that you were going to be there at whatever time you were going to be there. And in many instances, if your service started at 10, that trickling in, people were sitting in front of their computers at 9.55 or on their phones, um, being able to receive that word because of what the pandemic did in terms of exposing who we really are in culture as people. And I think that that's critically important. So consistency is absolutely critical during that time. Now, as we're making our way back to in-person worship, you're finding something else that's a little bit different. Or in-person brick and mortar business entity, you're finding something that's a little different. The virtual world, as we know, is here to stay. Now, I'd like to suggest that I don't want to, uh, to come on here tonight and to suggest to us that the new move of God is technology. No, the new move of God is not technology. Technology has always been a part of the church and industry, okay? We should have already been engaged in that eons ago. But what it does do is it actually causes us to have the ability to stretch our tentacles out even more to move into penetration, to extend the kingdom into the mindsets of people. So we're in a season where utilizing AI, if you're not familiar with that, or chat GPT, if you're not familiar with that, will help to make the difference in connecting, reaching, and touching people and re-engaging those who have not quite yet solidified where they are attending. So like I said before, one of the things that is absolutely paramount at this time is that many people have not necessarily made their way back into connecting somewhere at a local church. Some people are doing the bedside Baptist Pentecostal pillow talk kind of thing. They haven't made their way in yet and they're not really sure where they want to go, which is why I'm saying to those of us who are engaged in ministry and marketplace and both and at the same time, now is a time for those of us who are like-minded to begin to come together to develop skills and strategies that will reach people in 142 characters or 190 characters or a 45-second soundbite that will begin to have penetration that piques interest that draws people in. And thus, I believe the Lord has led me in this season uh, to begin to move forward with Dominion Covenant Fellowship that will help in that regard. So whether it's coaching, consulting, camaraderie, uh, strategy development, or even if it's just fellowship and camaraderie, I think that those of us who are like-minded, it is absolutely critical and paramount that we begin to come together at a time like this that we are in right now. I hope that that makes sense um, for us on tonight. Let me move right or further along into this because I wanna land the plane and be done around 8.45 and we can start to do some question and answer. So um, what I want you to remember is the gathering of lions uh, will take place in what I call Dominion Camp Meeting. Um, each year, twice a year is when we'll come together physically in person and stream it to do that kind of counseling, coaching, consulting, um, camaraderie development during camp meeting at least twice a year. And so I'm calling that the gathering of the lions, those who see a niche in business industry and marketplace, or who see a niche with ministry or both and at the same time. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. So many of you may not, most of you are already familiar with who I am. Uh, I'm in my 23rd year of full-time ministry. I'm in my 18th year as a senior pastor. 
um, an inaugural year as a duly consecrated bishop in the Lord's Church. My ministry is unique in that it has both a ministry and marketplace outreach arm to it, to it through our Dominion Community Development Corporation and several other entities that I've developed and that are in place and even more that are on their way from Dominion Enterprises to Dominion Kids Academy uh, to Dominion Bible College and Seminary. I'll talk more about that in just a second or two. Um, who am I? What makes me qualified to be in kind of a leadership role like this? And there you can see on the left, I have three earned master's degrees. None of them were given, all of them were earned. Uh, Ron Clark, who's joined us with us tonight, he and I were public policy students together at Regent during that time, or he may have finished a year or two before me. I couldn't remember, Ron, but uh, the uh, Master's of Administration earned, the Master of Arts in Practical Theology on the, on the right, you'll see my doctorate in ministry degree. I'm a person uh, that is very big on credentialing because uh, you can go any and everywhere in the world. I'm actually re-engaged right now. I came back from across the water. I was at Bangor University for a year, but decided to come back to my alma mater right at Regent and finish up my PhD in renewal theology. Still my work in the area of what I'm writing on in terms of, of uh, political theology and literally the spirituality of the black church that develops an agenda for the time in which we live. Um, I'm writing in that regard um, and I'll finish that up at Regent while I'm doing that uh, at the same time. So I've said all that to say, be patient with me um, as we begin to launch this and start this. That doesn't mean that I won't be available. That doesn't mean that you won't have access. That doesn't mean uh, what, whichever one you're looking for uh, during this time that I will not be present. I will be very, very present because I'm going to take my time uh, through this PhD and just chew through it. Um, literally, the PhD for me is more about establishing our Bible college and seminary. Um, what I found out is that you need five of those in order to establish an accredited uh, college so that those that finish bachelor's degrees with you, master's degrees with you, or do DMINs and PhDs that they can be certified. So I qualify for two with my DMIN and then here with the PhD. My pastor, uh, I'll talk to about him in a few minutes, Eugene Bellinger has three. He's lending them to me uh, to be able to start for the incorporating documents. And also one of my consecrators, uh, Bishop Clifton Clark, he has two a PhD and a D-man as well. And so they will make up the board for Dominion Bible College and Seminary. And we'll be starting in January uh, with our first set of classes. And so as you consider joining Dominion Covenant Fellowship and you wanna look at being credentialed, we have the ability that you can go anywhere in the world. We'll be both ATS certified, certified Association of Theological Schools and Seminaries, and we will be SACS certified, Southern Association of Christian Colleges and Schools. We will be both and at the same time. Uh, let me move on to the next one here so that you will know if it's the covering aspect that you're looking at. Uh, I am a duly consecrated bishop. I wanna draw your attention to that second line. Well, let me start here at the top uh, by Cathedral Covenant Fellowship Ministries. This is my pastor and my consecrator here. Harry Eugene Bellinger, he is now the chair for the Joint College of African American Bishops. Um, and I also have received the ability to ordain elders, deacons, commission evangelists, and mine is also the big key by right of apostolic succession with my right hand in the line of Peter. And so without doing all of that tonight, I can go back and quote all the way through in terms of my apostolic succession. My consecrators, you see Darren Johnson there from the Dominion Alliance of Pentecostal Churches, Jonathan Alvarado. None of these men need any introduction. Clarence Sellers with the Church of God in Christ. Um, Ezekiel Williams, who is the Archbishop and Chair for the Council, Hampton Roads Council that I serve on. Jerome Williams, who is also a part of Global United Fellowship. And uh, Compassion, uh, I'm sorry, Changing a Generation or Changing uh, international fellowship. And then Clarence Russell, who is a very, very well-known father in our area. So um, mine was duly consecrated. It took me five years to do that. And so if you're looking for credentialing, licensing, ordination, 
we can do all of that and you would be registered through our organization with these organizations. So that is both the Joint College of Bishops and then the Hampton Roads Ecumenical Council. I serve uh, in both entities, actually the Hampton Roads Ecumenical Council, we are an extension of the Joint College here locally. And so if you're looking for credentialing and covering or licensure in that set, in that sense, we can take care of that as well at the same time. Uh, most recently, I am serving in the second jurisdiction with the Church of God in Christ as the ecumenical leader uh, with their new leader, uh, Bishop Michael Golden, which is taking place on this week. And so that's another credentialing arm. And what is unique is that uh, presiding Bishop Sheard has allowed many of us uh, in an ecumenical way to be able to move in and out. So I'm kind of like a non-Kojic, Kojic kind of guy all at the same time with our fellowship. Uh, what makes us different? What makes Dominion Covenant Fellowship different? I want you to pay close attention to what's on the inside. These two hands here represent business, um, people doing business with each other. And of course you see the lions. Um, and I think that we're in a time now where the lamb is becoming the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. What's different about us is that I'm really intently focused on family. I don't think that as we look at leading pastors or leading business leaders, when our fellowships come together for a camp meeting, um, I don't think that we've done a very good job of ministering to the whole family, the pastor, his wife, them as a couple and their children. And so what I'm looking to do differently is not only have an arm for those who are engaged in the marketplace, so you'll see people connecting with us who are politicians, who are civic leaders, um, those who may serve in city councils. I just left city council tonight and uh, serving, uh, you know, you'll see Philip in our fellowship meetings when we gather, you'll see Philip Mayor Jones, Mayor Philip Jones, who will be a part of Dominion Covenant Fellowship was just asking me again tonight, when are we getting started? And so, because there's a need for a kingdom perspective and understanding for those who are engaged in politics, engaged in, biz in business, engaged in the marketplace, but also about family. I think two things are under attack right now, family and church. And so we seek to minister and meet the needs of both of those. Um, what makes me also a little bit different, many of you know me, I'm in a blended context there. My wife and I are with my two baby girls right here. There is Jasmine and Imani and then her children. Nathaniel and Ben and Zamira right here. Had a chance a year ago to take, you know, I probably won't do this one again. I took all seven at one time, drove 13 hours down to Florida and uh, we had some family time together. I think we're gonna break that up because I don't think I'm driving again. I'm too old for that, I'm gonna be flying. And so don't y'all judge me, it just is what it is. <laughs> um, but also Dominion Covenant Fellowship, the we'll get started. I'm in my neophyte year. October is my one year, which enables me to now launch and start the fellowship. And so we'll start on Thursday night at 7.30, Friday night at 7.30, which will be an ordination night. I know that Bishop Eric Tate is looking to, to recertify a lot of his documents, and he will be one that will that will happen for on that Friday night at 7:30, Saturday at 10 a.m. I'll be bringing in some national voices from around the country, um, and I'll hold that until the flyer comes out. Saturday morning at 10 a.m. from 10 to 11, and then from 11 to 12. Here's what I'm going to do differently. One of my daughters, I'm going to have her actually sit with me. And she, and I wanna spend time with those I'm calling young lions, those who are in the pastor's house or those who are a second or third generation and feel a call of God on their life between 16 and 30, while you all are downstairs with Bishop Darren Johnson and a few others, I'm actually gonna be piping in a couple of classmates of mine. And so they'll be on the screen and you'll be able to see that I'm hoping I got one of them that will be in in person. I'll hold that until uh, it's time to release that information. But while that's happening, I'm going to be upstairs talking to the next generation, 16 to 30, because as a second generation a pastoral leader and preacher, uh, if I'd have had persons who would have spent time talking with me in my 16 to 25 years, I think there were a lot of mistakes that I made that I might not have made 
uh, during that time that will have helped shape me in a different way. But, I, you know, as all things work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So one of the things I'm committed to is teaching the next generation about my mishaps, mess ups and um, musings, if you will, about how to avoid certain things. And so bring your children uh, as you come and I'll provide the information about the hotel block and all of that for those who will be traveling in from um, really around the world. And so there are a couple other pastors that didn't make it tonight uh, that uh, because of the time difference, Pakistan, uh, Africa, Uganda, Sierra Leone, and, uh, and a couple of other places um, that will, other pastors who will be connecting in as well, and other business leaders as well. And so the next time we meet, I'll spend some time talking with you about licensure and credentialing. Uh, connecting tiers because we have what we call a full membership, which gives you access to everything. And then there's an associate membership. And then there is um, an assistance, what I call an assistantship membership. So that associate and assistantship membership are for those who are on the marketplace side that they'll have access to that. Um, but if you want to do a full one, we've got three different tiers. I know the big issue is, Rev, get to the issue about the money. Um, I'm not requiring um, anybody necessarily per se to be uniquely engaged and involved in terms of your giving. Um, that's not what this is about to start out with. You know, uh, just like anybody else, tithing is important. And so, you know, I leave that up to the, the part of you in, ter in terms of 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. God loves a cheerful giver. We will have registration for some of the gatherings and some of the moments, just, and that's just to cover the cost of doing business and that sort of thing. Uh, but I'm not looking for you to, I'm not trying to rate people and that kind of thing. The Lord's called me to do this, to provide covering, connection, coaching, uh, com camaraderie, and um and that sort of thing. And so here's another thing that is different. No one person has it all. Not one. There's no one person. There's no leader I can imagine that's got all of everything. That's just not the case. And so there'll be some who will be connected with our fellowship, who will be connected with others. Um, I have no problem with that. I'm not trying to, you know, be the potentate and the pope. <laughs> that's that's not what this is about for me. Um, I'm different in the sense that I cover you as a pastor and a pastoral leader. You cover your church. And so this is not me trying to come and lord over anybody's church or fellowship or any of that kind of thing. This is a hospitality house, if you will, and a place where people can gather together, come together, learn, um, and then make connections and also experiential and credentialing at the same time. And so I thought I wanted to share a little bit of that tonight. And so let me put this back up on the screen one more time because I don't wanna go through all of everything tonight and take up all of you all's time. But the next time that we'll gather will be, let me put that one, let's see if I can get that one up there. Yeah, there we go. The next, oh, it's not working for me, huh? Oh, here we go. The next time we'll gather will be on August the 22nd. I'll re-put this flyer out, change up this meeting ID with the correct one. Uh, we'll meet again on August 22nd where I'll discuss these things in a very, very specific way. And also, let me stop my screen share and go over with you. I think I've got that pulled up right here. What the um, applications look like and the things that we've got in regards to that. Give me one second. I can pull some of those right now. Do I have that up right here? Yeah, I should. Anyway, yep, there it is right there. Give me two seconds. And I should have, oh yeah, that's over here. Okay, let's share that again. Let's go down. Where are you? Here we go. We'll do that. All 
I'll kind of walk through this a little bit more and um, you'll have a chance to kind of kind of get a whole layout of everything. I'll do some of this on next week and then uh, email this to you. If I don't have your email address, make sure you send it to me so that I can you have a chance to be able to see this and look at it and then pose some questions and things as a result of this document um, that I'm going to be sending out to make sure everyone has. And so I do have the application. I don't know where I did what I did with it in regards to why it's not opening up here right now, but I'll be forwarding that as well. So that's the end for tonight, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, thoughts, anybody want to share it all? Floor is open. Hey, Dr. Johnson, it's, it's uh, Dr. Martin. How you doing? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Hey, I'm, I'm you know, I'm a teacher, so, you know, we started back, so I'm, yeah. I was just getting off work. Um, but I, I've got a lot of questions, so, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll call you because I need, uh, they're trying to set up um you know flight time and stuff and that actually the 22nd is my 17th church anniversary that weekend and so we yeah so you know but I, I need to know how uh you know if i can get back home on saturday night for the uh celebration on sunday morning and that weekend then that'll be great if not then we've got to move it and so that's what we need i need to talk to you about that also about the all the other stuff and I got the redemption and stuff. I'm gonna get a packet together yes. and send it to you. But um, yes, I'm yes. just I'm excited. Thank you guys so much for uh, uh, for, for those y'all who don't know me. I, I met uh, Dr. Johnson when I first uh, entered the region um, in 2013. I met him in 2014, and so after one of my church members' uh, sister were members of his, and and her kids were son and wife was members of the church, and so. I took the Dr. Johnson, man, and I tell you, I just, uh, amazing guy, him and, and of course, his pastor at the time, um, and I just, it was just something special about this brother, and I passed across again not, not too long ago after I finished my doctorate, uh, yeah. Derek Regent, and I tell you, man, you got, you. I always felt you was a visionary, and, and, and it shows, and uh, I just want to know, I want you to know, man, that I'm, I'm preaching here from Dallas to be able to connect to you guys. And hey, that gives us another branch of, of the olive tree. And so thank you Amen. so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. We'll be in touch. My administrator is not on tonight, but uh, as I shoot out, you know, information, you'll be able to, she'll, she'll have the, the room block information, the um, application information. And then one of the things we like, because we're, of course, by the college, the joint college, we're mandated to ensure uh, that we, we see everyone's ordination certificates so that we're able to certify who you are and where you come from as you connect with our fellowship, because yes, you, you'll have the chance to be registered with the joint college under my name. Yes, and sir. So that's just a part of the due diligence. And we'll send that out. Uh, we're not gathering in person, uh, uh, Dr. Tate. We're not gathering in person on the 22nd. It'll be another Zoom call on that day. OK, um, but the gathering of lions, October 12th through the 15th, we will be in person. And okay. I have you slated on that Friday night. The 13th will be your ordination night. OK, and, great, uh, great. That's good. So, great. I have a few Church of God in Christ pastors, a Church of God that will be with us, and I have a Baptist bishop who will assist me also that night in the ordination night. Thank you, sir. And I'm excited. Wonderful, wonderful. Anybody else? Questions, comments, thoughts, concerns? Uh, one quick question for me. I, I noticed that we're um, doing a recording, so I know my schedule is going to be pretty tight for the next meetings. Um, yep. the distribution of those videos, will that just be emailed out? I'm assuming. Yep. Okay. Yep. I, will, I will email those out. So if you miss, you know, one of, because I'm going to cover a dis different aspect each night we gather. And so like tonight I will shoot this back out and you'll be able to have it. So if you miss the next one, uh, it will be recorded and it'll come back out to you. And then if you've got any more questions, you, you can always call me. 
Okay. And, uh, that sort of thing. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. I, I'm going to pick on, uh, I'm going to call him the resident scholar of the group. And that would be Pastor Chris Wyckoff. And just seeing his face, I can't believe he don't have no question or comment or concern tonight. So I'm, I'm going to just pick on him and say, Doc, I know your mind, your wheels are turning. Come on, you got to give me something. First thing I got to do is figure out how to operate the Zoom on this iPad. <laughs> Look, you know, there, there, there's no doubt that what uh, you have uh, conceived and what God has conceived in you and is birthing through you is, is absolutely necessary, you know, for so, for so many and impactful as uh, we come through this continuing, you know, COVID era. And uh, the adjustments that the that many churches need to be need to make in, in their contextual settings. Um, I can I can only speak for myself, you know, in in the sense that hey, I'm sending you a message that uh, right now about it. You know, there's a there's some pre the pressing matters in my own community yeah. and the. Uh, the, the synergies that are developing in in my area with with the great concerns of of, of housing and uh, you know voting issues and, and and such things is that that uh, I'm I'm now being you know pressed into to serve with Presbyterian AME Zion uh, you know and and other fellowships that are literally on on my own block uh i'm i'm not going to be able to participate in what you are what you are creating if i did not have these these matters that are just getting on my plate yep. even as i continue to teach in the doctoral level uh, as well as uh, prepare young minds for associate's degrees as well um I'm, i would definitely uh, encourage anyone to uh, trust you know in in your integrity you know with regard to your 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 leadership your bishopric and and everything that you have you know you have the full capacity to create and and to lead everything that that you are setting out to do it's always going to be solid always going to be on a firm foundation and and when and if you know Bishop, if you know Doctor, if you know Brother, if you know Pastor Preacher Raymond Johnson, you know that he's not playing with this. Uh, what he says he's going to do, he's going to do. And uh, it's simple, uh, I certainly, you know, have to, you know, you know I'm not going to, I'm not saying I can't do it because of anything that has to do with him. Uh, he knows he knows what my schedule is is like and, and many of the challenges that 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 I'm facing in the in the Wilson community and, and being tied to those right now uh, it would only it really would actually do you a disservice if I tried to you know participate in what you're doing and could only do it half heartedly Certainly, so absolutely Absolutely. But but there's there, but but there's uh, there's no doubt that you know I I would definitely encourage and recommend anyone who has you know the the heart for your for what you're doing, but also needs the covering and the and the uh, training and the the anointing that you provide. Uh, I would I would I would definitely say don't miss the opportunity. Yep. Uh, to to be trained and 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 mentored and and ministered to by this man of God. Amen, sir. Uh, he will be coming to teach. I can tell you all that right now. He will be coming to teach. He's a master <laughs> teacher. There's no question about it. Ron Clark, our marketplace guy, ministry guy. I see you got workout stuff back there behind you. Yeah. Like still so, at it. Yeah. This. <laughs> This may be a, um, a vague question, but I, I know sure, that, um, you know, this is your heart. Um, what does success look like for you? How will you measure success of what we're doing here? 
for me, it is, it's, it's not about size, numbers, uh, pastors who are coming in. You know, if, if my fellowship is small, that's not an issue for me. What's an issue for me is that if there is the spiritual health of the leader and the spiritual health of the business leader and to ensure that they live out their life purpose and that God is pleased with them. So one of the reasons why I took the family approach and, you know, this is going to become quite cumbersome as we go along as my wife and I were planning, but I'm very, very serious about successive generational leadership in a spiritually healthy way. And so, which is why I want to spend time with 16 year olds um, and 20 year olds, because, you know, all of us with the, except, well, there are a few of you, a few of us, we got gray now. <laughs> so we're not going to be doing this forever and a day. And uh, the idea is, you know, if, if I if I put it in this context, you know, Ron, you think about the plumber, it's whatever and son, uh, the electrician, whatever and son. Um, only in the church do we think that successive generational ministry leadership is taboo. Um, and really that's because we have so many spiritually unhealthy churches and unhealthy dynamics. And if I can help uh, people understand how to transition well while maintaining their marriages and pouring into their children and raising the next generation, um, that's another pet peeve of mine. I'm not gonna be one of these dudes that preach till I die or do business till I die. Absolutely not. At some point, I gotta be the chairman of the board and sit my hips down and I gotta be the pastor emeritus and sit my hips down and I got to be the Bishop Emeritus and sit my hips down. And so helping us understand that dynamic of how to do that um, in your 60s and 70s so that you're not in your 80s and can't nobody understand what you're saying <laughs> while you try to do this. So that's what success is for me, to see people successfully transition well and have spiritual health in their families and in their churches. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anybody else? All right, um, guys, go ahead. Go ahead. I have one thing. Um, I did want to. Um, I did want to just say, you know, I, I I love the idea of Jesus calling people out of the marketplace into the ministry. I, I think that's an awesome concept of what you laid out before us. Um, one of my big things that I'm kind of the, the Spirit of God really has me focused on is the church being more equipped than just um, in spiritual matters. Really, we have to be able to employ. I've seen people have churches for 10 years and yep. they can't even employ anybody. You know, you can't even offer the very kids that grew up in the ministry a job. So yep. um, I think the marketplace um, is an excellent place and it's also an excellent place for outreach, you know. Um, yep. And I wanted to ask you about that. I know you're going to be meeting with the pastors, the, you know, the, the different age brackets, but as far as the youth and young adult and the outreach arm of your, of your, of your, um, of your, um, I don't want to call it a reformation, but your, 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 your program. Okay. Fellowship. What, what, your fellowship. What, what is your main targets as far as the outreach portion of how we're going to touch the community and bring them in? So I'll, I'll use as an example what I'm doing with the Church of God in Christ. And one of the things Bishop Golden and I talked about is there's no one Reformation um, denomination or church that can do the work that needs to be done. So for me, I've been engaged in homelessness ministry for just eons in a day, and I, that was handed to me at the same time. So looking at the affordable housing aspect of ensuring that there's affordable people affordability that deals with gentrification is going to be huge so you'll see in about two days a marketing campaign that's going to come out from the side of my church where we're partnering with cracker barrel to do over 200 meals on the 19th of this month um, in terms of feeding people and i said to one of their higher ups, I'll say it that way, um, in my communication with him, I said, it's great that we are feeding people, but now 
how many opportunities do you have for workforce development where the same people that we feed, we can put in a training program to help them get a job. So economic development is gonna be, you know, my main kind of thrust and focus. Um, and then from out of that, there is the opportunity. Now you're talking about feeding and then employing in that. Now, now you got penetration and culture to where now you're having people have a livable wage, disposable income, and oh, by the way, we're gonna to try to figure out how to change your mindset in terms of how you live and decisions that you make. So economic development is always gonna be a major thrust for me. And of course, the politics side, you know, I've got tons of, uh, they're not on tonight, but they'll be on in the next couple of weeks. You know, uh, the, for, let's use another example. Winsome Sears, great friend of mine, She's asking me about how do I mention to the governor um, the idea of the transgendered issues with the bathrooms? And how do I have a biblical stance on that without violating the idea of church and state? And so I said to her, you have to see your role as prophetic, prophetic redemptive ministry. And um, at, th at that point, <laughs> you... You know, the Lord will give you what to say, but he's got to give you what to say in understanding the regs, regulations, promulgated le legislation. So working with that group to have hand in hand moments to bring people to the table, because my idea is as much as we talk about that transgendered bathroom issue in Virginia, if we got, I said this to two senators just two weeks ago, I'll leave them nameless. Um, we have a 6.5 million, no, 6.5 billion dollar surplus. I'm gonna say that one more time: a 6.5 billion dollar surplus in Virginia. Why do we have recidivism problems and homelessness problems, and employment problems? So I'm cool on the, you know, the transgender, but if I gotta go to Isaiah 51 and start to talk to you about how we deal with the poor and having cities of refuge, nonprofits ought to be receiving some of that money to be able to tend to some of these issues. I'm gonna be real strong on that kind of stuff. So economic development is gonna be kind of my push um, and how to do what I call kingdom entrepreneurship ministry in that regard. Yeah. So, uh, and I brought, you know, one of my classmates you know, I'm working on, I'll tell you ahead of time now, but he and I are trying to work his schedule out, how to get him in and get him out. And if we can't get it worked out, he's going to do the simulcast thing for me. And that's Darius Daniels. Darius and I, we talk this kind of stuff all the time. And so I want him to be in person, but his schedule is he's got to be at Atlanta because he's going to do his Atlanta service the next day on Sunday. So we're trying to work the flights out. If we can't get the flights worked out, he's gonna fly straight to Atlanta and then pipe in and I'll throw him up on the screen. But he's committed to coming to us at least once a year for our fellowships. And I've got that worked out with him. All right, guys. So this is just the, the starting point for tonight. Others will join in um, and we'll take it a little bit at a time as we go. Cool enough? And uh, another part, I'll say, Jesse, like some of the stuff like uh, Pastor Marce Winder and I spend a lot of time on just organizational dynamics of constitutional development, standardized operating procedures, accounting procedures and that kind of thing. I'll have all of that stuff brought to bear at the same time where you can kind of parse through and say, OK, well, if I set up this entity this way, how does it impact tithe and offering? What do I do with this amount of money? How do I fix that so I don't get in trouble with my local and state government? We'll spend that kind of conversation too. All right. All right, guys, let me pray for you and then we'll be on our way out. So Father, I thank you for these men tonight. I thank you for their wives, their families. I thank you, Lord, for the vineyard that you've called them into and how you have uniquely gifted and oriented them to be able to serve the kingdom of God. Lord, that you'll keep each and every one of them in the center of your will and God, that your hand of protection will be upon them. Keep them until we meet again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you, fellas. Have we'll a blessed night. Appreciate y'all. Right. Bless you one right. and all. Have a blessed night. See you again sometime. All right.
Bye-bye.